Legends and Super Legends, welcome to Vela Harmony. I want to talk about the differences between the quality levels of the shorts in different price ranges. And the reason that I got the idea to do this is I've been getting some comments on the channel uh, about comparisons between shorts like uh, Prewalski shorts to Rafa, and I even responded letting the user know. I think it was ZZ. I said, you're not, if you're not being, it, it won't be fair to the product because I've got Pirovsky shorts coming that they said they're going to send for me to review the bib shorts. And they're also sending their tights, which don't have straps. They just stop here for me to review. And he said that, uh, can you compare it to Rafa shorts when they get here? And I told him that it wouldn't be fair to the product. It would be like comparing a Ferrari to a Corolla. And with other direct messages that I've been getting from other people, I decided to go ahead and make this video just to set the record straight. Let's be real. If you buy a $25 pair of shorts, it's not going to feel the same as a $150 short or a $300 ASOS short or whatever. Even in the ASOS line, the Uno does not feel the same as the other ones. They have their F1 this and whatever. They got the different F13s. They're, they're different. They have different purposes. There are manufacturers that even make shorts that tell you this short is for long distance events. So they, they put maybe thicker pads or what, whatever they do, it has a purpose. So if you buy a $20 short made by anybody, doesn't really matter. You need to pay attention to the purpose of that short. Don't expect this $20 short to feel the same as a $300 short necessarily. It doesn't mean that all $300 shorts are the best. But the point I'm trying to make is the materials that are used in the creation of products vary. They decide at certain price levels what kind of raw materials to put in there, and that affects how they price the product. For example, if you, if you ride in a compact car, tight little car, let's say a smart car or something, even a, a, a Corolla, and you do an 800 mile trip, you're not going to feel as relaxed as somebody who is in a huge luxury SUV with lots of space, plush seats, all of that. They're going to get there more relaxed than you. That's just a fact because first of all, the wheelbase affects the ride and all of that. And I'm using that as an example because most of us are familiar with that. So you come back to shorts. You buy a $20 short and you decide to do an etape that is eight hours long, your butt's not going to feel the same than if you bought a short that was designed for long distance endurance events. So focus on the function of the product and quit trying to worry about whether this $20 short compares to Rafa or Castelli or whatever, because even at those higher levels, they have varying degrees of product. It's very important to stress that because you cannot expect to pay $20 for something that costs $300. That's just too much. That's too good to be true. Not going to happen. You're not going to get the same performance or whatever. Now, there are $300 shorts that a person may buy and it just doesn't suit their body and they return it. I'm sure a bunch of people have gone through that. Just because something high priced doesn't mean it will work for you. But the, the, the baseline is that the more expensive stuff have a certain market they're targeting. So if you're somebody who's riding for eight hours a day, you're not going to find a professional rider riding a $20 short on a training ride for eight hours. They might use it on the indoor workout. That's the point I'm trying to make. The short you buy has a purpose. Understand it so you're not frustrated and you don't blame the product incorrectly. You get what you pay for, okay? You want something that's very nice? Be prepared to pay for it. You know, I, it, it bugs me when somebody's cheap, but then they expect to get the benefits of something expensive. I mean, I have BMW cars when I, that I drive. I've driven a Ferrari. They're different. They're completely different, okay? They put different materials in the Ferrari. They put, it has a different motor. It, it drives differently. The Beamer drives differently. If I got in a Toyota Corolla, it drives differently. 
All these things have different purposes. Find what works for you and quit trying to compare things that are not in the same class. That's that's what I'm trying to get to because you're just going to drive yourself crazy. You may think something in a lower class feels like something in a higher class. That's all subjective. The bottom line is the materials that they're putting in these things at the high level are super technical. The $20 stuff and the $30 stuff, you may need to do more to get the same temperature regulation as the expensive stuff that they've already put a lot of technical stuff into it. That's what you're paying for. Besides the marketing, I mean, there are markups and other things, there are reasons why they're looking at what the market would bear. But the, but the bottom line is that you have to be realistic. You can't go through life expecting to get something for nothing. That does not work. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to get anything for nothing. You want nice stuff, you got to pay for it. You're not willing to pay for it, live with what you, you're willing to pay for and quit trying to compare it to the stuff that you don't want to pay for. And, it, and the reason why I, I sound annoyed because I am, because it's ridiculous to expect stuff for free. I mean, where, where do you come off thinking that things are supposed to be for free? You, you want something, you got to pay for it. You got to be willing to spend the time and the energy. When I pay for it, I'm not just talking about money. You got to invest the time. You want to know something? Invest the time to learn it. I get a lot of comments, direct messages from stuff that for, about things that are covered in the videos. I've got almost approaching 300 and something videos. They're covered in there. I made a playlist on the channel. It's all laid up. People don't want to invest their time. They want to come to the channel and put the comment out there asking questions that's answered in the very video that they put the comment on there. I just ignore that. If you're not going to invest your time to learn something, I was not created. Somebody else was not created to invest their time so they can tell you. That's like you having a watch and then saying, what time is it? And I'm supposed to come look at your watch to tell you the time. I mean, come on. Invest the time. I recently had a guy who came to the channel that said uh, he watched the, the video on slamming STEM. It's a very popular video on this channel. He posted his comment recently and he said, this video is long-winded. Stop. But it covers everything. I couldn't stop laughing. That's like saying, oh, why do I have to go to college for four years? But I want that degree. Yeah, you might be able to cut it down to three. I don't see you doing it in two. You just can absorb the material. It takes time. Nobody is willing to invest time now. They want everything quick. Not going to happen. You're just going to miss out. Uh, uh, multitasking is a fantasy. You're missing out. If you're trying to do two things at once, you're missing out on both. You're not getting the details. Bottom line, you're cheating yourself. It's not going to happen. Nowadays, everybody wants to be on Facebook and Instagram and all this crap. Who's got time for all that? I don't have time to invest in all these different programs. I put links on Facebook to draw people to the channel so they can come here and convey whatever comments they may have. And I manage it in one place. I'm not going to go all over the place answering comments. So the bottom line is invest the necessary time and energy to get what you're interested in. And have reasonable expectations, okay? There are expensive products that just don't work. And you get them, you try them, you send them back. They're not for you. You keep moving. That's why I like the Rafa Pro team line. They're classic stuff. Although it's nice, it's not my preference. It doesn't mean it's a bad line. What it means is I just don't care for the fit. I love the fit of the Pro team. Suits my body type. The next person may like Club fitting jerseys, which the classic would work. Or they may like the core, which is a training line. Rafa calls it their base introductory line. I tried the core. Didn't care for the inconsistent sizing. Doesn't mean it's a poor quality product. I just don't like the fact that when I buy one color versus the other, it just fit differently. And then the jerseys were too warm for me. I, did, I, I just didn't care for it. So I stayed with the pro team line. Find what works for you and invest in it. And stop expecting other things to necessarily give you what you can find here. Because you need to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. You need to make sure they're in the same class. So if you take a short from Rafa and it says pro team and you want to compare it to ASOS, 
you need to make sure that the, sh- the comparable short in the ASOS line is in that same class. So if Rafa says this is for performance rides or high-speed rides, then you find the ASOS short that's also for performance ride and high-speed high ride, or the Prewalski short that's for performance ride, and then you compare them regardless of price. But to just take something that costs 20 some dollars and say, I'm going to compare it to a $300 short, you're just going to drive yourself nuts. Not going to happen. Because as ridiculous as some of the prices are, there's still a certain level of quality of materials being put into these things that cause them to be in those ranges. And we have to pay for that. We have to pay for the design and the engineering. That's just the way it is. That's what you're paying for. It's not just the raw materials. It's all the other intellectual property that they use to design and manufacture this stuff that you're paying for. So that's just the way it is. So stop trying to, you know, people say, oh, Rafa's too expensive. I said, then don't buy it. That's my attitude. Don't buy it. You want a nice pair of shorts, you're going to have to pay for it. They offer it at a price. You don't like the price, you don't buy it, or you wait like most people do till it goes on sale if you want that product. It's the same thing with cars. If the car is expensive, you go, you work a deal, or you wait till they're having the Christmas sale or whatever else, if you want that product. I hate when people tell me something's too expensive. That's not a price. It doesn't say anything. Give me a number. What's expensive for you may be cheap for me. What's expensive for me may be cheap for the other guy. You know, say, hey, this short is $350. Don't say it's expensive. Say it's $350. Another guy, $350 could be $35 to him. The other guy may think $350 might as well be $3,500. So don't just say it's expensive. Say, man, they want $350 for these shorts. I'm not willing to pay that. Because expensive is relative. The word expensive is relative. means nothing. Somebody else may be willing to pay for that. Not, you know, think about it. Products are made. Do you think they price them based on, oh, cost, and we're just going to make, no, they price it based on what the market will bear. I had a professional job where we, we price based on what we thought people would pay. That's what it's based on. They come up with a number that they think you're going to pay. And then they watch. And if it's not moving as quickly, they start offering coupons and discounts and whatever. And that's when you take advantage of it. And then if you wait too long, everybody jumps and takes advantage of it. And then the product's gone, out of stock. That's what happens. So I wanted to make this video real quickly because the way I do reviews, I focus on what the products have to offer, what their features are, and I tell you what the price is. And if it's on sale, oh, it's currently on sale. I don't really care what the other product relative to that product is selling for. I focus on reviewing a product. That's all that matters. I review the product and I tell you this is meant for short rides, long rides, whatever. This is the pad. This is what I like. This is what I didn't like. Whatever. That's what a review is. Because you would never end a review if you tried to compare it to everything out there. Just doesn't make any sense. You know, there are certain kinds of reviews you can do and say, I want to compare these two products in this same class. Two endurance shorts. Two racing shorts. Now, That's the kind of stuff you're talking about. But when we're just talking about individual products, it's best to just introduce on a positive side or whatever positive, negative, everything you found about that product because the audience will have people that will like certain things you introduce about the product and there are certain things they won't like. So what I focus on is I spend the time on telling you everything I noticed about the product and then you decide whether... All of it works for you. Some of it doesn't, whatever pros, cons. And some people say, yeah, I don't like this, but I like that. But they still buy it. So my job at doing a review is to tell you everything I notice, and then you make your decision instead of trying to compare stuff unless it's a comparative review. So that I wanted to cover that today because I want people to be more realistic. If you're doing long rides, very long rides, more than three, four hours, you need to get comfortable shorts. You need to get shorts that have thicker pads that fit your body well. Because there are certain shorts that will work great on the indoor trainer and will tear you up if you're riding for four hours plus. And some manufacturers will even tell you these shorts are designed for shorter rides. Some reviewers will even tell you that. Okay? So I just wanted to stress that and make sure that 
people just be more realistic and live in the real world. Quit crying about something being expensive or whatever. Just don't buy it if you don't want to spend the money on that. That's your choice. Okay, so with that being said, get out there, get your miles in. Don't let anything stop you.